Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. This is Linda with Stamping School. A few months ago, my good friend in Mayville, Wisconsin, Debbie Mookie, mailed me this pretty card. And immediately you know something cool is in there because it's got a little, a little puffiness, although it's fairly flat to mail. But I would probably still mail it through and with a hand cancel stamp so that they don't, it doesn't go through the machines, the non-machinable stamp. Anyway, it's really pretty. It's using the Hues of Happiness paper and it's got a little magnetic closure and you open it up and there's this adorable little pop-up gift bag. So I wanted to recreate the template for you. I just sort of looked at hers and figured out the measurements and it's really fun and I'll show you how to cut and score it. So you make this really fun pop-up. So it's probably, you know, uh, easily fits a gift card either direction. You could put like a thin candy in here, something small and thin because you obviously you still want it to close, but this is fun. I'm gonna show you how to do the template and you guys can just go crazy and do it for every occasion you can think of. I'm using Amazing Year stamp set. It's in the Stampin' Up! Annual catalog currently. And it's a just, I love the fonts and I love everything it says. This is the card that I made. I used the Lovely and Linen paper and I wanted to use that stamp set and I made a belly band for mine instead of the magnetic closure. Number one, because I only had a few of those left and I have to order more from Amazon. And secondly, I wasn't sure if my gift card was going to get demagnetized. I don't think it would, but just in the off chance, I, I know I'm gonna put a gift card in here. So I decided not to do the magnet, but this is how I did mine. I used pretty, I used everything in that stamp set. So the birthday wishes and the, the bouquet, enjoy your day, and you're an entire year more amazing and lovely as ever. I just love the way that that is like a nice surprise on the inside. All right, I'm gonna show you how to cut and score everything. So as always, you can print all the measurements, but I will give them all to you. But there is a PDF that you can print with all the measurements. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you just look below the video, expand the description, and the link will be there for the PDF. And if you're on my blog, it's directly underneath the video. This is the measurements to make the card. So it's four and a quarter by 11, so it's a half a sheet of cardstock, and then you're gonna score it at two and a quarter and seven and three quarters, and that is your front closure. Okay, that's gonna go like this. So we put that aside, that's the easy part. Now what we're going for uh, looks like this. Actually, this is the top. So I'm gonna do it on white cardstocks because the lines are pretty hard to see the scoring on that. So this is going to be for the little gift bag. And you know, even if you don't make the card, you can just make a cute little, this, this will make a cute little thing that you can just hand somebody, it's adorable. But, All right, I'm gonna use my scoring board. Um, somebody asked uh, where you get these, and we still carry those in the annual catalog, page 155, the Simply Scored Scoring Tool, and it's a nice big, scoring area and I love it so that you don't have to keep lifting up the guard and messing with the little trimmers. I, I love this thing. It stays on my table all the time. So to make this cute little gift bag, so it's gonna look like this and you can give it this way if you want, just by itself, but we're gonna stick it in the card. You wanna start with a piece of paper that's four inches by nine and a half. I would suggest a designer paper just because it's gonna be easier to open and close inside the card. So we're gonna start with it in portrait position and you're gonna score it, this is the four inch wide. You're gonna score it at one inch and then you're gonna score it at three and a half inches and that's gonna create the top band that will fold over and the bottom flaps. And then you're gonna turn it this way and I'm just gonna flip it so you can see there. So now in the landscape position, we're gonna score it at three and a half inches, four inches, and four and a half. So that's gonna make those little, that little fold in there. And then come over to eight inches, eight inches, eight and a half, and nine inches. And that's what we score. Now these little red marks are where we're going to cut out. 
Now what I like to do is keep all my templates and I'll even give you the measurements for the layers that go on top. And I put all of those in a little bag and I keep them. And you can even print off a picture, take a picture and print it of something you make or make a card and stick it in there. I never like to waste a card, but use copy paper if you want to, but just so you have the measurements all the time. So this is what we're going for. And what you're gonna do, and I find it kind of helpful to fold these first, especially when you're working with the designer paper. So you wanna fold those and make your accordion. So mountain, valley, and mountain. So you can kind of see where this is going, right? And you, that kind of helps a little bit so you can see where you're cutting. Especially when it comes with a designer paper and it's a pattern, your eyes can kind of play tricks on you where those score lines are. And if you fold these in, you can really see where you have to cut. So we're gonna cut this little piece off underneath these two little half inch pleats. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Cut off these little guys. And take off that little corner just because sometimes it sticks out when you glue it on. All right? turn it over. This is the top band and we're gonna take off these little guys here, these little accordion folds. Same thing here. Cut, cut. And again, fold these down so you can see better because you don't want it to look messy. And there it is. Now, this is where you need to decide if you're gonna put handles on it, which I recommend. It's really cute when you have little handles. And this piece is going to get glued down here. It makes the top a little bit sturdier and it also hides where the little twine is. So from this point here, what you wanna do is get a ruler and these little holes on this top band here, this is the one inch one, you're gonna make a little mark at three quarters and again at two and three quarters. Okay. So it's two and three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch. And you're gonna do that on each side because you have two handles. Line up your ruler at three quarters and two and three quarters. Then if you have a hole punch, I have this old crocodile. it works great. You just come in and punch your holes right over your marks. And remember, this is designer paper, so it's gonna be a little bit thinner to work with. Punch your holes, and then we'll add the twine. So this is what you should have so far. Uh, two pieces of twine. Ribbon is a little heavy unless it's really thin ribbon. Uh, twine seems to work best, like baker's twine. Two pieces at five inches, I'm just using white. And if you have that sewing wax, you know I'm a big fan of this for the twine because it just gives it a little more support. Just makes it behave a little bit better. Right there. Um, I always have a rubber band with a magnet because it just sits on my carousel. I've got this metal carousel on my stamping desk and it just sticks there. Right. Get a little bit of tape and add a little bit right below those holes. And then you're gonna feed it through from the front. This is the front of your bag. Oops. And right about now you're saying, how much do I like this person? Do I wanna keep messing with it? But it's so worth it, I promise. Stick a half of an inch at the end down. And that sewing wax kind of helps all the twine stay together so you can fish it through the hole. This is this hole I believe is one eighth. I don't think it's, yeah, it's one eighth. There. So you're gonna do that on each side. Okay. And then glue down this whole top flap right on top of there. Like just like that. So for instance, on this one, I wanted these flowers to be on the front and then inside. You can kind of see, you still see the flowers and the other pattern on the inside. Okay, now it's really easy to put these together. Kind of fold this back together, fold this back together, and it should be nice and flat. Now, this is where you might need to do just a little tweaking. You kind of feel it. You know, you wanna make sure it's nice and even. 
I put my flap on the inside when Debbie, I looked at hers, hers was on the outside. I don't think it matters much. I like mine on the inside, so I'm going to do that. So this piece gets some glue, and then this folds right over. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, and glue that down. And there it is. There's your little bag. Now these are going to go inside the card, so I'll show you what that looks like with the designer paper. All right, this is what you probably have in some designer paper that you've been playing with. I've got my flaps glued down. Um, I have all of this, you know, tucked in. And you know, on this paper, I really notice I probably should have glued this to the outside because you see, you can see the red right there. This is short. I don't know if anybody's really going to notice, but I can see now why Debbie might have glued it to this side. If your paper it is, is too noticeable. You notice that a little bit. So I kind of see why she did that. But I don't know if anyone's really going to pay attention. So we have our here our little gatefold card right here in navy. Scored at two and a quarter and seven and three quarters. And this is how you put the bottom in. This is the most important part. There are two score lines down here. Okay, we scored those at one half of an inch. I shall do it like this so you can see better. Put glue on right here on that bottom flap. And it's going to go right in the bottom of this fold, right at the bottom. Not on top of it, but just before it in the center, right there. Okay, so you've got the, this little flap glued on. And now this one gets glue right here, right here. Fold it, press it. Ah, there it is. So cute. I love that <laughs> with all the writing all over it. But this I would keep as my as my template. So that works good. And I'll just put everything in with it. But at least now we can kind of see how that goes together. You can. See, nice and flat. All right, so let me show you mine again. So you kind of see, here we go. Now I chose um, this paper because I had started stamping all these and I needed something that was a little um, less busy but still kind of coordinated. So these front panels, this one is two inches by four inches and this one is three inches by four inches. I'll keep those. And then on the inside top, this one is two inches by four inches. This piece is four inches by four and three quarters. And then I added some of that pretty sweet sorbet color down here. So four inches by four and three quarters. And this one is two and a half by four down at the very bottom. And again, a little bit of that. And I stamped everything in one ink color. This is the Knight of Navy. Everything is a Knight of Navy. And then I just colored the flowers in Sweet Sorbet and a little bit of that light pool party just around the tag and a few dots to make it pop out a little bit. A parakeet party and mango. Just a little bit of the yellow around there. Now for the belly band, it almost makes it all the way around, but you need to put a little bridge in there. It's just a little bit short. So you're gonna bring your half inch piece of paper all the way around, put another little piece there just to tie them all together because it's just a little bit short or just glue it on there and use some nice strong tape, make your little belly band and I just added this little rectangle with the stamped present that came from the same little stamp set. It's hard to beat Debbie's because it's just so, so pretty. And she just used white cardstock, so that is super easy. And with the magnet. Thanks, Debbie, for sharing this with us. And we'll see you guys later. Give it a try. We'll see you next time. See it, learn it, stamp it.